Well, John Forrest over the far lane was hoping that his funny car points lead coming into this event would also be extended as his teammate Ormsby's was. But then Dave McClellan, he ran up against the man from Minnesota, Tom Hoover. In round number one, John Forrest had to watch as Tom Hoover just squeezed by for the win. Yeah, I don't like those. Uh, it makes it tough, but uh, he's a good racer and uh, he did well. And uh, I don't even know what happened. Our car uh, ran good enough to win a race. It's just he come back from where he was and stepped up on it. When we got down there, John and I both, neither one of us knew who won. I thought I won, but I wasn't going to take credit until they told me. The rookie Casey Spurlock joined some very elite people. He ran in a 519 blast in qualifying to the number one spot, one of five cars who have run in the five teams. But he got stung by low buck Johnny West. What it is more than anything is just a, it's a morale boost for our, all the guys here because we're working on peanuts right now. And, you know, to go rounds every once in a while, it, it does do us good. No one was having more fun than 86-year-old George Hoover, crew chief engine builder for his son, Tom. Tom on the right side of your screen squared off in the final four with Johnny West. And again, it was West. It's nice. It really is. Makes you feel decent for once that you can run with some of these guys. We may not be running the numbers, but at least we're getting there first. But in the final, can you run the number? Could you risk your precious parts to run a number to win it? Well, actually, we are trying to run a good number. We've stuck some of this high gear stuff in here, the high tech guys have got. And we're just murdering clutches, and I don't know what to do about it. The competition for West in the finals, Chuck Etchell. Remember back to Atlanta when Paul Smith said if they got the sponsor, they're going to step up and win one someday? Well, they got the sponsor, and Chuck Etchell's raced Johnny West in the final. But all eyes were on Johnny West as the car got sideways, careened into the wall, and it was about this point that most of us realized Johnny West must be unconscious. The driver in the car making no effort to stop it. It was accelerating almost 100 miles an hour at the finish line. It gained speed. As I said at the time on NBC Sports, this will not be pretty. Head on into the retaining wall at the far end that separates the racetrack from a public highway. We feared the worst for Johnny West. Johnny West was unconscious, but the good news is he came out of this accident in pretty good shape, Steve. Yes, he did. Spent a few days in the hospital, but he's back to wrenching on other people's cars because he doesn't have one of his own currently, and here's why. It was determined later that a fuel line had broken and it sprayed moisture under the right rear tire. That allowed the left to continue to drive and it drove the car into the retaining wall. The initial impact knocked Johnny West out and he was just a passenger when all of this action took place. At that point on the track, the guardrail across the end runs at an angle, and that turned the flying car of West. He was taken from the vehicle and transported to the hospital, and as Steve pointed out, spent several days, but is back on the racetrack again, serving as a crew chief. But there's the funny car driver who earned his first ever national event victory, Connecticut's Chuck Etchells.